Uh, Matt, we're still with the uh, the rigid part of the hull. Can you show us how you uh, put the the inflatable part of this together? Sure. How we put the tube down? Absolutely. Yeah. This hull right now is all set, ready for the tube. Okay. Um, and what you can see we've done is we've marked out where the tube sits. The tube sits right on this flange here. We call it the tube flange, appropriately okay. enough. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and we've got the edge of the tube flange wrapped with a piece of fabric yes. so that it gives you some chafe protection when yes. the tube's sitting there. I see that. Yeah. It's all marked out. So what okay. will happen is when the tube comes in, done from the other room, it gets sat down and attached. Yes. But it doesn't just merely sit on this material. Okay. Or on the on the hull. Yeah. What happens is, and there's one step missing, we attach a fabric hinge. Okay. Which is this piece of fabric, basically. All right. And it gets folded over. Yep. Just like this, so it makes yep. it, you know, a hinge is yep. what we call right. it. Right. Right. And what we do is we glue this down right here on the on the tube flange. Okay. And then we put the tube down on top of that. Yes. What happens is when the tube gets hits the bonding, or the, the bonding agent, which is a glue, yep. it's there. Okay. But what happens is with the with the tube or with the um, hinge, you get a little ride in the tube. Okay. So that actually contributes to some of the performance characteristics because it actually acts like a mini shock absorber while the while the boat's running through the water. Interesting. Now we don't just do one attachment point. We also then attach the tube from underneath. Okay. So one that seals out water, but yes. it also gives the tube some holds the tube down so it doesn't lift the wind. Yes. And you don't get yes. Too much yes. Movement. Yes. Then in addition to that, we come back here to the transom. Okay. And you can see there's a large surface for the tube to attach here. Yes. And you yes. can see it's already kind of shaped to yeah. take the tube. I see that. So the mm -hmm. tube gets set in here, mm -hmm. and then we attach it over again with some additional patches here okay. and some other patches. Okay. There's a series okay. of probably 20 patches that hold the tube onto the boat. So really? it's not just a single point on the boat that's holding it. Yes. It's a multiple set of, of attachment points all kind of working in opposite directions to hold it on. So it's very strong. Yeah, very strong. Okay. Very strong. We actually, one other thing, we glue our tubes to yeah. the hull. Okay. There are other methods out there um, that you can have a removable tube. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something for you to take a look at when you're out, you know, shopping for boats. Yes. Instead of it glued, the tube slides in on a track. Yep. And then it gets attached with a clip at the back. Yep. Uh, the argument for that is that it's easy to take the tube off, have yes. it repaired. Quick repair, yeah. Um, you know, one question as to why you would maybe would want to do that, but nonetheless, that is an option that some people look at. Mm. So. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's go from this to uh, maybe one that's a little bit further down the road and just keep following the progression. Sounds good. Okay. Great. Matthew, here we are at a boat that's a little further down the line of being finished. Can you share with us kind of uh, what's going on here? Sure. Well, as you can see, we still don't have the tube on this right. boat right now. Right. We're at the point now where we We've bedded down the deck panel, you know, so the yep. fuel tank's below here. Yes. We've got it all bedded down and, and cocked. Yeah. We've now added the console. Yeah. We've added seating. Yeah. We've done the initial install on gauges, yeah. electronics, the GPS, yeah. throttles, everything like that. So we're at that stage now. Cables have been run. Yep. Um, the next step, if you will, would be we would start doing uh, engines and, and that kind of thing. So this boat's all set for engines. Wow, wow. You know, it's interesting. You don't see this type of seat very often. So um, it looks like this boat's been customized uh, for an application. Where's this boat going? And uh, do you do customization very much? Is that typical that you would customize different types of boats? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, that's one of the biggest things that we do here is that we personalize every boat to our customer's application. Oh, okay. And that comes mainly because so much of what we do is on the professional side, yeah. okay. law enforcement, the military. So we get okay. a, basically a mission requirement from them, and then we build the boat to meet that I need. I see. Right. This boat is actually a, a presidential police security force. Hmm. Um, it's actually going over to the Philippines. Interesting. Uh, we're delivering a fleet of them to basically offer protection to their presidential palace, which is located along a river. Oh. Um, and their requirement was they need to carry four personnel on yeah, top okay. of them, in addition to a driver. Yes. So you can see there's four additional seats back yes, here. Yes. And these are our standard pod style yep. seats. They're designed yep. to keep you in the boat. They yep. support you. Yeah. Uh, and the thought process to this is you have the um, special forces in there. They're supported. Yeah. They're holding on. And then, you know, they get to their end. They can dismount quickly and go and do what they want to do. Okay. But yes, personalization is what we do here. You know, you can have custom tops. You can have different colors, different mm -hmm. consoles, mm -hmm. locations, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you need to build, you know, have the boat built to do your job. That's what we do. And that's great on the recreational side, too. Yeah, right. Interesting. That's very interesting. 
Well, let's keep moving down the phases and, and learn more about this process. That sounds great. Matthew, we just worked, we've just moved to another part of the factory. What's going on here? Well, we're in the um, rigging section where we basically we have antenna arches here uh -huh. that go to the back of the boat, right uh -huh. over the engines. Okay. And what we're doing right now is we're installing spotlights, um, radar mm -hmm. antennas, mm -hmm. any kind of lights or antenna mounts. All that stuff happens off the boat. We feed all the wiring up through it. Yeah. So that's what Phil doing is Phil's doing right now. And then once he's all done. This is all as one package. We then take it and we bolt it right onto the transom. Ah, interesting. Very interesting. Well, that's a super point. Let's go on to the next one. Matthew, I noticed we got some, some big outboards on this, this particular boat. Um, on ribs in general, is there a choice of power? There is. I mean, just like any boat, really. You have the choice of a single outboard engine, twin outboard engine. You can even do inboard diesel really? engines with stern drives. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, you can also do jet propulsion as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so you have several options. Okay, so it's not it's nothing unique about a rib in terms of power. You can have the same power choices with a traditional craft. You can have the same power choices, but what's unique about a rib is that you gain a lot more speed oh, you do? Um, than you would in a traditional boat. How's that? Uh, one of the main reasons is that you half the boat is made up of an inflatable tube. So uh, you obviously, okay. you know, the sides of the boat aren't as heavy yeah. you know, with an inflatable tube. The yeah. boat's a little more buoyant. It sits a little higher in the water. Yeah. So when you have less drag, so yes. the efficiency of the engines are far greater. Okay. Um, the other point is they can go faster, but more importantly, you can end up putting less horsepower on the boat and get the same amount of speed because you've got a lighter product. Hmm. Very interesting. That's very interesting. How about price points? So you've got you've got choices of power. You've got perhaps better speed for the same power. A rib in general, when it goes out the door, um, should people uh, think about paying more or less or about the same as a traditional hull craft? Well, I think it depends ultimately on anything. You know, just like whatever kind of a you know vehicle you're looking at. You know, whether you're looking at a Ford, you're looking at a Mercedes, you know, something like that. There's always going to be a varying, yes. you know, level of, of price. Right, um, right. But when someone's looking at a rib, they are going to be comparable to a hard-sided boat. They're not they any cheaper okay. than a hard-sided boat. Okay. Sometimes they may be a little bit more, but at okay. the very least, they're comparable. And one of the main reasons is they're fairly labor-intensive to build. You've got a fiberglass boat that you build. Yes. Then you build an inflatable boat. <laughs> right. So, you so you're boats. actually got two boats for the price of one. Right. Right. Okay. So, but but the prices wouldn't, as you say, they wouldn't be extraordinarily more expensive or less expensive. About the same range. People think uh, as an alternative I should consider then the price point will be in the same neighborhood they were considering for other boats of this size and type. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Good. The Good. big difference is that they'll just have probably more opportunity to use a rib than a hard side boat simply from their performance characteristics and ability to go out in rougher weather. Mm, that is very interesting. Well, let's move along to our, uh, our next segment of the show and go from there.